stronger together. Based on ZFMS French cartoon, Ladybug and Cat Noir are ready to show off their moves in their first ever big screen debut. While the movie may only be getting a Netflix release here in the US, we're still ready to see how these animal themed heroes and villains stack up against each other. I'm Keefe Nosi with Wicked Binge, and this is Ladybug and Cat Noir, the movie characters good to evil. Just a quick heads up, major spoilers ahead. Although, since we're dealing with two different continuities here, we're only going to be talking about the movie and won't be mentioning the show at all. With that being said, let's get started. As always, we're starting with our most heroic and pure-hearted characters before working our way down. These characters are the good. For our gold medal of good, we're giving it to Alia Césaire. She may not be a superhero, at least not in this continuity, but she's certainly the best friend that someone like Marinette could ask for. I think you and I were meant to be. The two of them first meet when Alia protects Marinette from Chloe's wrath. A self-proclaimed reporter and fly on the wall, she uses her phone camera to get Chloe to back off, preventing her from hurting Marinette. Additionally, Alia is shown not seeing Marinette's clumsiness as a bad thing, instead choosing to be encouraging and supporting as she pushes Marinette to be more confident in herself. She's nice, but she's also able to be honest and genuine, further making making her come off as a great friend. Alia is also a great ally in the sense that she's likely Ladybug's biggest fan outside of Adrian, with her being the first one to call Ladybug a hero after reporting on her and Cat Noir's first fight. Moving on to our silver medal of good, we have Tiki. As the Kwame of creation, Tiki is an excitable, tiny genie whose main focus is saving the world, coming off as one of the most pure-hearted Kwamis. Her duties are always her first priority, and Tiki will do whatever she needs to do in order to assure that the world has a Ladybug to protect it. This, unfortunately, means that Tiki can can be just a bit pushy at times. We see in the film that she refuses to allow Marinette to quit being Ladybug, eventually getting annoyed and impatient before eventually just forcing the role onto her. But as pushy as Tiki can be, she can also be one of Marinette's greatest sources of support, giving her the guidance needed to find her inner hero. And speaking of that hero, our bronze medal of good is going to none other than Marinette Dupain Cheng, aka Ladybug. Marinette is an incredibly shy and self-conscious girl. Although she has her own talents like art and fashion, she isn't very confident in herself and struggles to make friends. The fact that she's pretty clumsy doesn't exactly help much, but for all of her faults, Marinette does indeed have what it takes to be a true hero, even if she ends up outright rejecting the ladybug role multiple times. But while she may be reluctant to be a hero, it's more out of a lack of belief that she could be a hero rather than a lack of desire to do good. This is further demonstrated multiple times throughout the film where she's shown pushing through her fears and being brave, such as when she saves Master Fu from getting hit by a car, which is what earns her the miraculous in the first place or when she saves Cat Noir's life when he's stuck on the train tracks or nearly drowns in the river. Speaking of Cat, it's nice to see that Ladybug's willing to be equal partners with him in spite of the two of them not having had the best first impressions with each other. What truly makes Marinette a heroic character, however, is the fact that she ultimately cares more about protecting people than giving in to her own fears, to the point where she jumps in to protect Cat Noir even without her powers. This, in turn, is what gives Gabriel the chance to see the truth about his son, resulting in his choice to give up being Hawk Moth. We also see Marinette, after getting her miraculous back, use her power of creation to rebuild Paris. Though some may be frustrated with her reluctance or self-conscious issues at times, it's really no surprise why she was chosen to be Ladybug. Moving on, next is Master Wang Fu. Master Fu is the keeper of the Miraculous, and as such, it's his responsibility to look after the Kwame and help them choose the heroes that will keep France, and the rest of the world, safe. He's very friendly to the Kwame, almost acting as a parental figure to them. You must work together! When Tiki and Plague choose Marinette and Adrian to be the next Ladybug and Cat Noir, respectively, Master Fu tries to give them both guidance and encourage them to work together instead of trying to take on Hawk Moth's villains alone. If he has any real flaws, it's that he never really does much more than act as the wise master, which can only do so much in terms of helping out. He also doesn't have much tact, as seen when he freaks Marinette out after she rescues him. Considering he was worried about the safety of the world at that moment, though, we can't necessarily blame him for wanting to find a new hero as soon as possible. Following him are Marinette parents, Tom and Sabine Dupain Cheng. While they may not play a huge role in the film, they're still seen as pretty good parents, both by the audience and by Marinette herself. Her mother especially is shown to be incredibly supportive, trusting Marinette to be able to take care of herself. Sabine also gives her daughter good advice, telling Marinette to listen to her heart and believe in herself. You just have to believe in yourself. As for Tom, while he's a super caring dad and is shown making Marinette's favorite bakery treats, he can also sometimes be pretty protective, such as when he goes after Marinette when he hears there could be trouble at the fun fair. He can also 
also be pretty embarrassing, such as when he ruins the moment Marinette and Adrian have while at the fun fair. But even with all this, you understand that he means well. Although Marinette may sometimes be a bit frustrated by them, she loves both her dad and mom a ton. As shown at the end of the film when both her parents drop her off at the Winter Ball, we finally come to our other masked hero, Adrian, aka Cat Noir. Much like Marinette, Adrian has two different sides to him. When he's in civilian mode, Adrian is a bit on the quiet side but can still be kind and helpful, like when he's being concerned about Marinette when he sees her crying or falling over a library book cart. Regarding his father, Adrian also tries to be patient and understanding of his dad's grief, even while dealing with his own. Although, understandably, even Adrian has his limits. I lost my dad a long time ago! His true personality comes out, though, when he becomes Cat Noir, who's introduced as someone who's playful, somewhat cocky, and pretty obnoxious, given all his cringy puns. He's also shown looking down on Ladybug at first, calling her a sidekick instead of his partner. His first real fight doesn't go too well either, with him not showing much concern about property damage during the Notre Dame fight against the akumatized gargoyle. But hey, his Kwame is the Miraculous of Destruction, so it isn't too surprising, we suppose. Still, Adrian really isn't a bad kid. He just wants to have some fun and find a purpose, something he felt he lost after his mom died. After the funfair fight, we see Cat become much more humble towards Ladybug, allowing the two of them to have a better relationship and work together more easily. Unfortunately, he does fall briefly back into his old self when we see him briefly disregard his hero duties after getting rejected by Ladybug. Even when he pushes himself to join the fight when he sees how much danger there is, Adrian's still a bit catty, pardon the pun, towards Ladybug and unfortunately doesn't get a big hero moment like she does during the finale. Still, it's nice to see him willing to to forgive his dad for all the trouble he caused, wanting nothing more than to help Gabriel and for the two of them to be a family again. Finishing off the good, we have Nino. Nino is pretty much to Adrian as Alia is to Marinette. He's supportive and encouraging towards Adrian, wanting to help him have fun so we can get his mind off both his mother's death and his father's neglect. You know that I'm here for you, right? He's a nice kid, but he can still sometimes be a bit of a nuisance with that skateboard of his. It's this clumsiness that partially causes the inciting incident between Marinette and Chloe, after all, and we see him bump into several other students too. He also doesn't always give good advice, like when he tells Adrian to be mysterious as a way to win his crush over. But for what it's worth, Nino is still a caring friend that's able to help Adrian out in his own way. Moving on, these characters manage to land right in between good and evil. Welcome to the gray area. We only have two characters in this tier, starting with the other main Kwame of the film, Plague. While he may be the Miraculous of Destruction, it may be more apt to call him the Miraculous of grossness. Constantly burping and farting, Plague is pretty crude and obnoxious. Though he occasionally tries to give Adrian advice, he isn't very good at it and overall comes off as not nearly as supportive as Tiki can be. Two halves are stronger together or something. Still, as callous as Plague can be, he does care somewhat about his new cat noir. He's also shown being concerned with his save the world duties, like how Tiki is. Being the one to push Adrian into being a hero again instead of just wallowing in heartache. For our final great character, we have Natalie. She's the assistant to Gabriel and, in all honesty, tends to blend into the background during the majority of the film. In the moments where she does speak up, she's shown being concerned about the relationship between her boss and his son. She tries to encourage Gabriel to spend time with Adrian and even goes out of her way to check up on Adrian herself later on. But while she may care for the boy, the two of them aren't that close and she isn't seen offering any direct non-passive support. What truly lands Natalie in this spot though is the film's epilogue scene where we see her with the body of Emily. This could hint at some possible nefarious plans from her, but as for what these plans could be, I guess we'll just have to wait for a sequel. We've finally arrived at the cruel and the wicked. These characters are the bad to evil. For our bronze medal of evil, we have the magician and the mime. These two are movie-exclusive villains that, while not all that interesting in terms of personality, certainly leave an impression with their powers. They were apparently the two most wanted thieves in Paris, and after getting a power boost from Hawk Moth's Akuma, they're given the means to be destructive and cause a ton of chaos at both the fun fair and throughout the rest of the city. Using their magic tricks and miming, they not only destroy a good chunk of Paris, but they're also shown being willing to kill Marinette and Adrian, as well as innocent civilians, in order to get their hands on Ladybug and Cat's miraculous charms. In all honesty, they're probably the most pure your evil villains of the film, given that we know nothing of their motivations, but there are still two other villains who top them in terms of scope. Moving on to our silver medal of evil, it's going to Chloe. For as much as she may seem like your typical popular girl, she certainly takes bullying to a whole new level. Her one and only goal in the film is to get revenge on Marinette after she accidentally ruins her expensive sweater. Chloe actively threatens Marinette multiple times to the point of not just chasing after her in school and out in public, but also threatening to strangle her. <laughs> Yeesh! When when physical threats don't work, we see Chloe play into Marinette's insecurities, lying and saying that she's the someone else that Adrian mentions when he turns down Marinette's dance request. Stop getting in our way. 
Beyond her high school vendetta, Chloe's just bossy, manipulative, and callous in general, with even Sabrina, her only friend slash assistant, being someone who she still treats like dirt. We do see Chloe be on somewhat friendly terms with Marinette at the Winter Ball, but this doesn't stop her from promising Marinette to still be a bully to her when school starts up again. I guess we shouldn't have expected anything different. But while our final villain does indeed get an actual redemption, his crimes still overshadow any good intentions or moments he might have had. So, unsurprisingly, the gold medal of evil goes to Gabriel Agrest aka Hawk Moth. Really, even before he becomes a supervillain, Gabriel's seen being cold and callous towards everyone he interacts with, from his seamstresses to his assistant and even his own son, always putting his work above spending time with Adrian, or heaven forbid, sharing a meal with him. But while Gabriel may come off as heartless, he's really just heartbroken after the death of his wife. Although he's hesitant at first, Gabriel eventually disregards the Moth Kwame's warnings, being willing to do whatever he needs to in order to even have a chance at bringing his wife back to life. While he later claims that he's doing it for the sake of Adrian, it's pretty obvious that there's some selfishness in there too, as once he fully taps into the Moth Kwame's power, he gets corrupted pretty quickly. I hate you, Lady Buck and Cat Noir. He also doesn't seem to care if the chaos he causes hurts or even kills others, so long as the people he cares about are fine. To Gabriel's credit, he does try to warn Adrian to stay away from the funfair, not wanting him to get caught in the crosshairs. But given that Gabriel still launches the attack anyway, it's just another case of him not caring enough to stop and do the right thing instead of continuing to search for easy answers. It's only when he learns that Adrian is Cat Noir and that he could have killed his own son that Gabriel gives up the mantle of Hawk Moth for good, apologizing for everything. Again, it just feels a bit hollow in the sense that he still nearly burned Paris to the ground out of frustration and grief, and it's why we're unable to rank him any higher in spite of technically being more redeemed than Chloe or the Magician and Mime duo. 